is about time to hear about the Antichrist. And I will be speaking from the perspective of certain Bible verses. And by the end of this, you will know various reasons why some people have became Satanist. And you will know what the Bible actually has to teach about the Antichrist. And you will know something about how Jesus relates to the issue and why this should affect your voting choices. So, here we are. Now, some people are going to say, in terms of, oh, what law, sh what law should a Christian nation rule by? They can pretend all that stuff in the Old Testament is, oh, well, that's done and gone with. But, Matthew 5, 17, has Jesus say, you do not do away with any of the law, but you restore it. So you find anything bad in the Old Testament that you don't like, well, the Christians are supposed to follow that. And... But what does the New Testament have to say? And I'll start off with something about the Antichrist. 1 John 2, 10 to 19. Antichrist don't keep the company of Christians. So if you do not hang out with Christians enough, and I don't know what criteria you would have to follow, but uh, if they don't think you hang out with Christians enough, you're the Antichrist. Um, I'm going to go on further, and I'll close more about that. Um, Matthew 13, 12, and Mark 11, 25, advocates sort of a steal from the poor and give to the rich sort of philosophy. That, well, the poor, the rich, let them get richer, and the poor, let them get poorer. So you know how that plays in our current political scheme. The major candidates running for the sake of either their own corporations or their other corporations, and why should we pay welfare checks to the rich with 84% of our taxes, directly or indirectly. Mark 7, 26 through 27, and Matthew 15, 22. Other Semitic people and other races are insulted. Again, so the Christian policy would be not only racism, but tribalism. Well, this Christian policy. Luke 12, 47 says that slaves don't, who don't do whatever the masters want need beaten. And we see how this sort of plays out in the prison policy of the uh, experimentation on the prisoners with drugs and torture methods and how we deal with our prisoners of war and our so-called terrorism combat but there's sometimes reasons why people should disobey and why should we have this goal of enslaving millions of our own people and millions of people overseas are let's let's be honest some systems treat the slaves better than the than the employees do get treated in this country. Well, some people treat their employees right, but uh, most corporations will not do that. Luke 14, 26. Be 
willing to hate your family. While some religions, and I, I talk about some of those in my the rest of my thing, say that, oh, love those who don't even like you. But no, no, the, the non-Christian family member, you, you hate them. You hate for Jesus' sake. John 12, 25, hate your life. What value is self-sacrifice if you hate your life? Don't hate your life. Love your life. Embrace your life. Turn your life into this thing of paradise. So all this, well, you know, we want to enforce it on people, that people hate their life. Let's make their life miserable. Then they'll obey. They'll have no choice to obey them. Let's drop all that. Luke 19, 11 through 27. And I've heard sermons upon this subject that have basically said that we should do this as a Christian majority country. We should follow this. Those who don't treat Jesus as Lord, they're, they're the enemies of Jesus. Bring them here and kill them. Kill them? That's pretty insecure. Either you, you take him as Lord in one way or the other for yourself, or but not taking Jesus as Lord is something to kill someone over? Acts 19.19 19. Book burning parties. Book burning parties. Destroying non-Christian media is a long practiced practice. And, you know, there's many, many other reasons why we should, uh... oh, Colossians 3.18, wives and children should obey completely. And, as I've pointed out before, not all scriptures agree with this. No, dis, you know, when it comes to certain things, you have the right to disobey anybody. And even your family, you should be fair to your family. Nope, nope, here it says to obey them completely. And further on to the Antichrist thing, John 2, uh, 2 John 7 through 11. People who deny a physical incarnation of Jesus are liars and antichrist who don't by the father son god idea are to be are to be not let into the homes or even greeted um now in a way they might say you deny the physical uh, the incarnation a Jesus idea if you're one of these people who realize who realize the simple fact that Jesus is four historical characters and who knows how many myth mythological characters but this really treating people as second class instead of they greet you, you greet them appropriately. And not everybody who says they're not Christian is a liar, whether or not they're following that sort of, whether or not it's just a opposition, but they, they authentically don't believe in Christianity, and that's perfectly fine. We should operate in this country like if you want to believe, believe. If you want to disbelieve, disbelieve. Whatever you want. And again, further into the mention of the Antichrist. 1 John 4, 2 through 3. The Antichrist is not thinking that Jesus has a human body. And, okay, 
so that kind of goes on. But, you know, you don't buy this father-son god myth that they have. Um, and what was that verse? I bring not peace, but a sword. So the, the peacemaker thing was apparently only when he had to, um, if you take that interpretation. But there are... A, there are 52 ver verses in the New Testament, and if you take them literally, you're not you're not Christian. Um, and among that is Matthew 7, 22, 23. How can you not heal in Jesus' name? How can you not cast out demons in Jesus' name? How can you not do good works in his name if? Christianity is valid. That's that's basically the definition of being Christian, is you've done that at some point, and you haven't renounced that. Um, but it says he'll re it says that he'll renounce these people saying that he knew none like them, and that they work lawlessness. The only person in the Bible who went up to Jesus to worship him, Jesus renounced that. Jesus renounced that. So in their way of thinking, Jesus Christ is the Antichrist. And also, let's let's look at what we're hearing on the TV. What's I'm sure a lot of you have heard on your movies that the Antichrist is a great peacemaker, particularly among Muslim nations. Anybody who makes who makes the Muslims get along, the Islamic world get along with each other, oh, particularly the Middle Eastern part. Yeah, that's the Antichrist. You have to fight that. You have to make things as bad as possible for Jesus to return. Why not make the world a paradise on earth? Their idea of the Antichrist is somebody who makes peace, who makes, par uh, who makes paradise on earth, who fixes the environmental problems. This is the agenda we should be voting for. Peace. The maintaining of the bodies of the people who live in the nations in health if they want the safety of those people to believe what they want to act in their personal life more along the lines of their not not enforcing christian prayer like some of the political candidates in this campaign have said. Not trying to intrude into the private lives. When people feel oppressed, some of them are going to lash out. Their idea of the Antichrist would put an end to that. Because there'd be peace and security, religious freedom, the acknowledgement that not dispensationalism that there really is only one completely valid religion that all faiths are not only inflections through time and space of this one religion but some deviate in one way or another. Allow your Watania, your ethnic ways. Ethnic ways are fine. Allow personal experience. The Antichrist to some of these people wants people to have their own experience, to learn how to have their own understanding. Not just believe, do preach 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 too um but no we need those other aspects of life 
Life is not just a right-hand path, that you have something, that you have something, and you follow whatever tradition has been given you. Do not follow into the way of your ancestors blindly. This is the age of the child. This is the age where we've acknowledged our puberty, our independent morality, our ability to choose. It's our ability to choose. That means our values. And forcing people to do otherwise, look at what happened in so many countries. Look at what happened with so many spiritual paths. When they tried to force it on other people, it failed. The same thing with secularism. People just hide their beliefs. And we all have beliefs. So strive against this. Take the right-hand path that you want. Take the left-hand path that you want. As long as you aren't hurting other people. And none of these wars. Stop it with your crusades. Stop with your crusades. Holy war is bunk. Now, I hope you've understood my message and the meaning behind my idea of vote the Antichrist agenda, what that means in this case.